Hello guys, welcome to my video tutorial on virtualization and containerization. Before I start the course, I am a DevOps engineer and I write my blog at techieandtravel.com and I own my YouTube channel. If you like it, please like, comment, share and subscribe my channel. So before jumping right into the virtualization and containerization concepts, let's look at the traditional system architecture. So for instance, you went ahead and purchased a hardware. In the micro level, your hardware has CPU, memory, devices, network components, right? So without any operating system on top of it, you won't be able to do anything with the hardware. So you go ahead and install an operating system. Operating system can be Linux based or Windows based or Mac OS, anything. You install applications on top of operating system. But have you ever wondered, all these applications require access to the physical hardware for it to run successfully. So what facilitates the connection of application with the physical hardware? That's where kernel comes into play. I mentioned Linux kernel in here because I use Ubuntu operating system, which is Linux based. So kernel sits on top of hardware and above that you run multiple applications in the user space. So whatever you do in the web browser, for instance, is in the user space and kernel works in its own highly privileged zone called kernel space where it has direct access to all the hardware. So this example of non-virtualized computer shows that Linux kernel is what facilitates the communication between the top level operating system and the hardware. Have you ever thought about this? Rather than having to install a single piece of operating system on a dedicated hardware, what if you could install multiple operating system and create multiple machines on that single piece of hardware? That means each individual machines has their own operating system has their own kernel. You could do whatever you want to do within that machines. But those machines, all of them, they share the same piece of hardware. That would be cool, right? Think about another possibility. What if you have your hardware, you have your operating system installed on the hardware, but rather than having to install any applications individually, what if you could package them into a container? For instance, you are a developer and you are writing some code and you are doing some testing on an application. What if you could package all the related code, all the related binaries and its dependencies in a container and spin it up with one command? What if you could destroy the container when you don't like it? What if you could spin hundreds and thousands of instances of the single container? That would be cool, right? That's the main concept of virtualization and containerization. If you watch the image closely, you see on the picture on the left has a hardware level abstraction, whereas the picture on the right has a operating system level abstraction. So virtualization is a hardware abstraction, whereas containerization is a operating system abstraction. Before jumping into more depth, you need to understand this important concept called hypervisor. So hypervisor is a piece of software that creates and runs the virtual machine. Or in other words, hypervisor is what facilitates the creation of virtual machines. It is also called virtual machine monitor. What it does is it isolates the hypervisor operating system and resources from the virtual machines. So there are two types of hypervisor. One is type one hypervisor and the other is type two hypervisor. So hypervisor that runs directly on the host hardware are type one hypervisor, which you can see on the left. Examples include KVM, Microsoft Hyper-V, VMware vSphere, etc. Type two hypervisor can be called as a hosted hypervisor. That means it runs on a conventional operating system as a software layer or as an application. For example, Oracle VirtualBox. You install Oracle VirtualBox 
on an operating system that you already installed on a physical machine. What about container then? Containers have OS level isolation, meaning all containers run on top of operating system. They have their own container runtime that facilitates the communication between container and the underlying infrastructure. As you noticed, containers just have apps and libraries packaged inside its isolation. It does not include an OS. That's why it's lightweight. That means it is not huge in size as compared to the virtual machines. But let's think about it. What if the containers or the virtual machines impact the host operating system? That means any changes that you do inside a container, for example, you deleted a specific file inside a container, does it impact your host operating system? It should not lie. That's the meaning of isolation. So what exactly facilitates this isolation and resource utilization limits? That's where namespace and C groups comes to. So namespace, they provides the isolation and C groups, they provides the resource limitation. Because of this isolation and resource limitation, it helps to run application in an isolated way, just like any other process. So in containerization, for instance, in Docker container, every Docker container seems to be like a process to the host operating system. The host operating system has its own process with the own process ID. Application containers has their own process ID, but that does not impact anything on the host operating system. So this is it for the concept of virtualization and containerization. In future, I'll be covering more videos on more Docker containers, LXC containers, and clustering, uh, as well as how to create an application stack. So if you like my video, please like, share, subscribe, and let your friends know about it, and stay tuned for more videos. Thank you.